So let's start by focusing on the front end of the mass spectrometer. And that first component that I talked about was the ionization sources. In the previous video, you saw uh, a video, a sort of sub video, uh, for what was called electron ionization. And so that was when you had this uh, anode and cathode that were biased relative to each other, about 70 electron volts. Uh, and you had electrons being thermionically emitted from a filament to an anode, and then you pass your neutral molecules in, in, uh, inside of that path. That's electron ionization, super, super common for um, gas chromatography mass spectrometry, the most common ionization source. It's the thing that comes sort of standard on most of those tools. So uh, in like an organic course, uh, you've all, if you've taken that course, then you've used GCMS or you've interpreted GCMS spectra or you've seen GCMS spectra before. Uh, in that case, you always are using this electron ionization source that comes in. I like to liken this 70 electron volts as, um, you know, a, a sledgehammer when it comes to uh, breaking apart a molecule. It only takes a few electron volts to break apart uh, a carbon-carbon or carbon-hydrogen bond. So you're, you're really just destroying these molecules, but you're destroying them consistently and systematically uh, the same every single time such that we can compare these across really any uh, type of electron ionization GCMS system out there uh, that allows us to have these sort of standard uh, libraries and we have a library so that you put some molecule in you don't know what it is you just made it uh, into your GCMS you smash it apart you get a mass spectrum that mass spectrum then looks you know like this where in this case you have the mass to charge ratio of the fragments that you just broke apart with your sledgehammer and then you have the abundance or the intensity or whatever is being measured here, which is just a proxy for how much of each of these individual fragments of different masses you have. This is a fingerprint. I know we like to use that in chemistry a lot, thinking about chemical fingerprints, but it really is a fingerprint because a molecule is gonna break apart based on the energetics that are holding it together. So if you break it apart with a standard tool, 70 EV all the time, then you're gonna get more or less the same distribution of those fragments, and that allows us to have standardized libraries to search and compare against. So that's electron ionization. So the problem with that sometimes is, like I said, this is a brute force mechanism. And sometimes if you have a fragile molecule, something that's not very stable to begin with, the whole process of getting it into the gas phase, even if you get it into the gas phase and it's still staying together, it hasn't thermally decomposed and break, broken apart yet. Um, once you smash it with 70 electron volts, you may completely destroy all of the original molecule. The problem with that is normally in the interpretation of a mass spectrum like this, usually the heaviest peak out here, this thing, uh, is the same mass as the molecular weight of our compound, uh, whatever that, that peak is furthest out, right? And that makes sense. If you put a, a molecule in there, uh, whatever this is, we'll just say it's just a blob, this is your molecule, and you break it apart, the heaviest thing that you can weigh of that that broken apart thing is the original molecule, meaning it didn't break apart. Meaning, you know, if you send a trillion of these things through the 70 EV beam, some proportion of them are not going to be struck by that beam at all, and you're going to be left with the original here. The, if you know the mass of your compound, that's that's much easier for you to then re sort of reverse engineer and identify uh, the masses of the individual uh, major fragments that that take place throughout the mass spectrum. So uh, for those molecules that are really labile, the ones that um, can't take this sort of pressure, uh, we use chemical ionization, which is considered uh, what, we, what we would call a softer ionization source or mechanism, meaning if we have labile molecules, we can, get, we can break them apart while still preserving a larger proportion of the original molecule, which means we'll be able to still deduce its original molecular weight. So instead of just smashing it with a really intense electron beam, what we do is we generate an intermediate reactive chemical species, something that doesn't have quite that amount of energy, but something that uh, is still going to augment both the charge and the, the um, potential fragmentation pattern of, of, of the system. And one way to do that, there's several, 
uh, is to create that reactive species. And in this case uh, of this example, we're, cre we're using methane to create a reactive species. So we, we take CH4 and we ionize it with electrons. So there is an electron gun in the system, but we bleed some methane into that electron gun. And that what that does is it creates a radical cation. So it pops an electron off the original methane, creates the radical cation, liberates two, uh, another electron. And uh, so that, that radical cation then comes in and extracts a proton from another CH4 molecule, creating this super reactive CH5+, plus, which is uh, essentially a super acid, right? It, it, it's just going to want to dump that proton to anything it can, and that's exactly what it does. In this case, I'm using this M, this red M, just as some generic molecule, but essentially what you have then is instead of passing your neutral molecules through the 70 electron volt beam, you pass it through this, this, ga this reactive gaseous atmosphere. What happens is that super acid comes in and it just protonates anything that gets close to it. Anything that can get close enough to actually donate the proton, it does. And so in this case, we even if this thing is um, even another acid, right, it can be a strong acid, it doesn't matter, it's still gonna protonate it because the pKa of this thing is negative and, and tiny. So it's gonna protonate it and you're gonna be left with this thing here, which is going to have a positive charge, uh, which will render it capable of being separated in the mass analyzer, which is important. Okay, so uh, what that produces is a spectrum that is distinctly different than what you'd imagine you'd get from an electron ionization source. So I just grabbed this figure out of your textbook. It shows two different molecules, two isomers of each other, these ketones, uh, and the left spectrum shows the result of chemical ionization, and the right shows um, the, actually, let me double check that. Actually, sorry, these are both electron ionization spectra um, of two isomers. And the w this is sort of taking a step back, but this just shows us for electron ionization how you get these distinct patterns, even if you have two molecules that are isomeric to each other. They're both C6H12O, but they give these distinct patterns. Um, if you have chemical ionization, um, you can imagine now when you have when you're trying to deduce the molecular weight of your compound, which typically is going to be the the this peak right here. Uh, weigh out whatever the heaviest thing is. Um, now you're going to have that peak plus the mass of uh, hydrogen atom. So that's going to be called what's our M plus 1 peak. Here the M plus 1 peak for uh, electron ionization is really small. That's coming from the fact that 1% of all carbon is in carbon-13 form, so it's got an extra neutron. So you've got uh, a percentage of that original fragment that is uh, one mass unit heavier. This is electron ionization. If this were chemical ionization, we'd end up having a much smaller or a much larger M plus one peak because it's such a soft technique, uh, we wouldn't have broken it all apart. Even in this case, you can see in both of these, there's very little of the original molecule left. Instead, we have dominant, these fragments that weigh uh, 43 and 58. So that's the general gist in terms of these two big uh, ionization sources.